Hello everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from sound for more It's Leo speaking. Today I have the pleasure to show you how to use the Shaper Rack or module, which allows you to shape differently your waveform and if used it in the right way, you can also create different type of sounds. So I will go through a little bit of how the rack works and then I will show you a demonstration. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's start clicking on the plus sign and let's introduce, uh, first of all, an ADSR so that um, the next step when I add an oscillator, it will not uh, continue to play. So let's choose the oscillator mini that um, has been actually recently uh, changed or enhanced. Indeed, if you change the waveform, you know, you have sine 9, sine PD square, etc, etc. So check it out. It's really nice. Let's select sine for now. And this is what it sounds like. Okay, next, let's uh, go to processor and uh, let's go to the shaper and let's choose shaper. Okay, so you have a different type of uh, parameters that you can uh, change or algorithms. You have three different saturation level from a milder one to a stronger one. You have two different types of wave folding, soft and hard, and also the clipping mode, which has been recently added by Beep Street. So let's start with the first one and let's listen to uh, the differences as I increase the amount. Okay, let's try the second one. So it's more aggressive and also the amplitude is higher, so just bear that in mind. And finally, the third one. Even more aggressive and sharper. Indeed, if you add an oscilloscope, so let's search for... Um, um, scope, like so, and let's add oscilloscope. Let's try again with the three, three different type of saturation, and I'm going to decrease the volume. Now the master volume to zero, so let's focus only on the different uh, waveforms, and let's lower also the tune so you see it better. And let's change the X scale, like so. Now, saturation one, let's choose, let's increase the amount. You can see what is happening. So it's becoming sharper and sharper. I started to move towards more of a shape of a square wave. Now, let's check with saturation number two, like so. So it's sharper, stronger, as the signal say is almost now a square wave. And the third one, again, so you can see it's changing rapidly and then there you are, practically a perfect um, uh, square wave. Okay, so let's set that down to zero. Now let's go to folding, folding soft and hard to different modes. And um, in terms of what it does, well, have a look. This is eating folding or compress effectively your waveform and in this way it will increase the number of changes and if indeed the uh, frequency will also move up and that is a soft one and you can see the difference straight away if I use a hard one is much sharper and aggressive in terms of compressing okay and then let's listen now to what it sounds like. So I'll reset this value and change the volume up from master and let's listen to the differences. So this is folding soft. And then folding hard. And of course, it is very nice if you use a modulator. So let's say that you have a mini LFO and you drive the amount using the mini LFO, like so. And 
and so on and so forth. You can have lots of fun. Now, <clears throat> let's have a look at also the new mode, which is called clipping. So let's listen. <laughs> Okay, and now let's uh, decrease the volume. Let's uh, lower also the frequency so you can see better that waveform and see what happens when I clip. You can see it's clipping top and bottom, like so. And then, of course, it becomes almost a square waveform. Okay, perfect. So let's uh, set this down to zero. Let's reset the tune. Okay, and let's uh, increase now the master volume again. Now, we have also a, a new dial here, a bias, which is practically when it is greater than zero, is introducing a direct current offset as a blocker. And if you use that, for example, against a waveform, which, is, which has parts which are positive and negative, um, it can remove one part or the other, depending on how you have set it up. So let's try. So I'm going to set it clip amount to zero, but I'm going to increase to maximum the bias. Now, if I, again, use a, a slower waveform, you can see the difference is there already. Let's um, reset the value. Let's lower the note. And you can see there is only the lower part of the sine wave in terms of waveform, and the top part has disappeared because it has been compensated by the bias. Now, this is very interesting because what uh, you can also do is, let's say that uh, you go to a processor, and let's, um, um, actually, sorry, let's go to uh, the MUF category, and let's choose the invert. This will invert... Uh, the signal coming out from the envelope, which is from the oscillator. So what was the positive side is now the negative and vice versa. So if I now add a processor like the shaper again, and I set it to clip amount zero bias maximum. Now I will only let through the lower part, the negative of the waveform, but because it has been already inverted, it is the original positive. And now I can, uh, um, go to MUF again, invert it again. So in this case, the first shaper will have only the lower part of the waveform and the invert two will have the top part of that waveform. Okay, so let's um, introduce again that oscilloscope to check if that is correct. Okay, so let's connect these to the shaper. You can see only the lower part. Let's connect it to the invert tube. Only the top part, which works very nicely. Now you can use these to actually apply effects to the top part and also the bottom parts, and you can create new sounds. So let's try. Let's, for example, search for a phaser. Okay, let's connect the phaser to the first shaper. So it's the bottom part of the waveform. You can clear clearly hear the effect. Then let's add um, um, mini LFO, and then let's add um, also an analog filter, and let's drive the cutoff using the LFO, and let's pick up um, the invert two this time, which is the top part of the waveform, and apply the analog filter. <laughs> Okay, so we have two distinct uh, effects. Now let's apply a mixer to mix the two, like so. So we pick up the phaser and uh, also the analog filter. So this is the phaser. And this is the analog filter. Let's combine the two. And as you can hear, you can have a completely different sound. And remember, we are only using one voice at, at this time. So let's 
business go high at the register? Of course, you can choose different effects. You can, um, you know, apply a delay, for example, instead of a phase up, whichever you prefer. But you can see how versatile it is using the shaper with clipping and um, and the bias set to maximum to invert, um, uh, sorry, to um, separate the top and bottom parts of the original waveform, in this case, a sine wave. But experiment, just change the sine wave, for example, to triangle. <laughs> Have fun. I hope you enjoy. See you next time. Bye.